what are some powerful lessons that we can learn from AI leaders when it comes to successful AI adoption? I'm Carlos Lara, and today we are going to learn three powerful lessons about successful AI adoption from a millionaire AI entrepreneur, David Ma. David Ma is the, co the technical co-founder of Dynasty. Dynasty is a conversational AI company for real estate. And the Dynasty, essentially what they're doing is they're streamlining real estate customer interactions using intelligent chatbot. That's essentially what they're doing. But Dynasty, they did not start as an AI company. They were not doing any AI initially. And they actually, they realized that there was a problem to be solved here using conversational AI specifically. They pivoted, meaning they adjusted the business model to go in that direction. And then within two years of this pivot, they got acquired by Appfolio for $60 million. Now, how is that possible? How can a company go from starting with AI and in two years have a $60 million acquisition? And obviously David in the, in the process became a millionaire along with his co-founders. But what are some lessons that we can learn? What makes David and his co-founders, you know, Dynasty, the company, so different from all of the other failed AI startups? So what are some things that we can learn? Well, one of the things first before we go into the lessons is the co-founders actually had real estate domain knowledge, meaning they had worked in real estate before, which is why they were even able to identify that there was a problem in the first place. So having that domain knowledge of that industry is extremely important before you even get to the AI. So very, that's a, you know, very, that's a bonus lesson right there to start off with. So let's, let's get into the lessons. What lessons, what can we learn now? David in his in, and he was interviewed and he was asked, you know, what what can other people do differently? How can they succeed in successfully implementing AI to add value to customers? And he said, look, he's a technical co-founder. He can write code, AI code, machine learning code. He, he's very intelligent. But he said, business is always more important than AI. Now that's counterintuitive. And he said that the reason why most AI, AI startups fail or even most AI projects in the enterprise fail is because they pick highly technical people. You know, these could be even very academic people with PhDs or oftentimes even college professors who have never worked in the real world, world who just love the AI too much. They love the machine learning. They love the AI. They love all of that way too much that they end up focusing on the machine learning algorithms and focusing on state of the art performance and all of these tricks and fancy mathematics and the, all, all of the technical details. And they never stop to ask, what problem are we actually solving? How do we even measure that, that success? So you want to avoid that. You want to start, first of all, with domain knowledge of the industry where you're actually applying the AI and then identify a business problem. That's the most important thing. And realize that that is more important than AI. If you have AI algorithms or models, as we call them, you know, machine learning models, that they're not the best. I mean, there's already better models out there. If it solves the business problem, that's really all that matters. Because in practice, you can spend, let's say, six months developing the perfect machine learning algorithm, or you can spend one month or even less, I mean, it depends, just grabbing an okay algorithm, but that actually solves a business problem and gives you a return on your investment and actually adds value to customers. So always focus on this. Business is always more important than AI, so you want to stay focused there, whether you're technical or not, and especially if you're technical, focus on the business. It's going to have the biggest impact, you know, for you, for your company, and for your for your customers, and then over the long term of AI, long term AI adoption to the overall industry itself business, always more important than AI. The second lesson is focus on integrating AI and machine learning into existing business processes. And this is very common where a company or a project will start like an AI center of excellence or an AI pod innovation center, something like that. And they will start developing the AI or machine learning solution or project in isolation from the rest of the organization. It's almost like they're doing like scientific experiments and that can work in some cases if you're doing research, if it's R&D, research and development specifically, but for practical AI adoption, and especially if you're at the beginning stages of your company, it's at the beginning, early stages of AI adoption, first you want to prove the value on a small scale. And what you want to do is instead of trying to get too innovative and think of a problem that's never been solved before and use AI on it, you want to focus on a problem that's all, that you're already solving, that your company is already solving, and just try to solve it with machine learning, with AI, and see if that solution is better. And why is this good? This is good because since it's a problem that you already know, you're already solving it, and there's already a solution in place, and you know how well that solution is working so far. 
and you, you actually have a performance benchmark. You can compare the current solution to the AI solution and realize, okay, is AI adding value? Is AI a better solution? So it's very clear. You have clearly defined metrics and KPIs up front versus if you pick a problem that you've never solved before or try to get too innovative in something new in isolation from the, from the, from the company, then it's going to be very difficult. And most AI projects fail because they are not integrated with an existing business processes. So what you want to do is look at the existing products of the company, look at the existing processes, the operations, the systems, look at the, the business itself and ask yourself, where is the use case? Where can we bring AI or machine learning or deep learning to improve this process? But there has to be already a process in place. You're already solving that, that problem or the, there's already some inefficiencies involved in that process and you want to stay focused on that. That way you have, again, a performance benchmark and then you know whether or not you're successful. So that's extremely important, it's, again, especially at the early stages of AI, AI adoption for your company. The third lesson that's extremely important as well is avoid solving too much at once with AI. This is also very common, I mean, especially with startups or even some, some enterprise projects, they want to solve a huge problem. Sometimes they want to change the world and people get very passionate about AI. I mean, everyone is talking about AI. AI is, it's the future. It's amazing. And even I, I love AI. I mean, obviously, and I'm extremely technical myself, but I also have this extreme focus on business and you don't want to solve too much at once with AI and that is just because you can't. The methodology for adopting AI is lean methodology. Think of Agile or Scrum that gives you a good idea, but you can't just solve a big problem all at once and expect to get it right. You have to start small, prove the value of AI for your company, for the given use case on a small scale, even if you're not getting ROI really or too much ROI initially, at least prove the value. That is the first step. You always prove the value on a small scale. Then once you have that, that benchmark, then you expand from there and you want to iterate. It's an iterative process where you're getting feedback from your customers, from your users and from your clients and see if, if this solution is actually working iterate, improve, and, and go from there. So again, avoid solving too much. That's how projects fail. They, solve the, they want to solve this big problem. They, they don't do this iterative approach. They want to get it all right at once. And then six months later, even a year later, they realize, wow, this project is, is a big failure. It didn't work. There was no ROI because they're just too focused on the, on, on the end goal initially. And you actually want to take your time to prove that value on a small scale. Be patient. Develop that iterative process. Develop those in-house capabilities and expertise. Because even, even if the use case that you're implementing has already been proven, at the industry level or at the sector level, your company is still unique. It's You have unique products, processes, systems, even a company culture. So you have to start small and make sure that you're implementing it in a way that will actually work for your organization. Make sure the stakeholders, everyone understands what's going on. So that's that's the subject for of, of a different video. But again, you also, you also want to, to keep that in mind. Avoid solving too much all at once with AI. And I'm going to put a link in the description so you can actually see the, you know, the, this interview more in detail with David Mott if you want some, some more additional insight. But these are the key takeaways that, that you want to, to take. And especially if you're implementing AI projects or leading product management for your company when it comes to AI and machine learning, these lessons are extremely powerful for you to keep in mind. Now, if you're not an AI right now and you want to take your career to the next level, grow, join the growing field of artificial intelligence, but coding is not necessarily your strong suit. You want to be focusing on the business side, you know, work at the intersection of technical and business. Click on the link below. I created a free training to show you exactly how to make this career transition from where you are into artificial intelligence without coding. So you can, again, work at the intersection at that management point, leadership point between technical and business. And I show you step by step how to do that. So again, click on the link below. You know, f watch watch my free training. And if, if you have any questions, by the way, this getting into AI for the first time, if you're not there yet, it's a great first step. Whether you want to grow into executive leadership roles, or if you want to start your own AI company, your own AI startup, or your own AI consulting firm in the near future, that's going to give you that critical hands-on experience, expertise, and domain knowledge as well to make to for you to be positioned to succeed in the longer term for your career or whether you want to start your own company you know whatever you want to do ai is here it's growing and there's an unlimited career growth opportunities for you and you can get this this first job get hired in ai and you don't have to be a developer or an or an engineer and you can add a ton of value to the organization as long as you keep these things in mind and other things that will that will keep covering here so if you have any questions or thoughts comment below and i will see you next time